hope everyone knows why we are here for the demo of a devops so i hope everyone are interested in uh, pursuing or becoming a devops engineer right but uh, already today in today's time uh, devops engineer consultant architect position is so much confused position if i tell you for the frank uh, when i started doing devops back in 2013 or so that time we had very clear goals on uh, what we're going to do uh, we were doing a lot of automation we were working with developers and we are delivering the code quickly efficiently so ideas were pretty clear in the organization but when i stepped out of that organization uh, and i i saw uh, other places people having different different perspective on devops okay people coming from different background will have different perspective like developer will look devops from a different point of view testers will look it from a different point of view system admins will look it from a different point of view okay so it's already very confused term and there are new new technologies that are coming in today's time if you just search for devops engineer profile or uh, uh, skill set you will see different people saying different different technologies new new technologies are coming in right so uh, re recently we have aws cdk which is an automation tool again uh so may, more tools that are coming into the market are confusing people more that which tool should i learn how should i learn where should i get started the problem is actually to get started with okay like when you decide to do something there is a technology you know you have to go there and you learn that technology right but in devops there are multiple technologies processes concepts so it's difficult to you know know the starting point where should i start with that's the biggest problem my name is imran uh, i have been doing uh, devops from quite some long time and i i have a long, around 11 years and more years of experience uh, in it industry uh, in that uh, majorly i did um, cloud computing automation devops okay so i'm very much passionate about anything that is manually run so i can automate it automation uh, and cloud computing are my two passions which i've been following from long time uh, i i develop some creative ideas uh, you know for very very mission critical complicated uh, manual labor work i have developed comp you know uh, really very creative solution for automation uh, which for that i have created some projects also and it's already available on udemy i have devops projects uh, for advanced people who already know devops <laughs> Uh, where you will see so many creative ideas of how you can do automation okay and the same this creative ideas i put in the course i put in the consulting work i have been uh, certified in various areas uh, in uh, from from red hat from aws and from other places i am a red hat certified architect i have done certification in ansible um, um open shift open stack uh open shift is most of <coughs> kubernetes actually uh and in aws also i have a uh, nice certification sysop certification i am a devops professional uh which is one of the toughest aws exam to crack really uh and also security specialist in aws if you know aws cloud computing uh cloud computing uh, uh people say that it's very vulnerable so knowing how to secure it it will be one part of our course so as well i am a security specialist so and i am going to guide you on various front where you can be careful in terms of security there few other certifications that i did in my distance past you can check this slides later also i'm going to give it to you uh if you have any questions related uh, certification uh you can ask me at the end of the course i will help you what is the right certification one of the most popular questions that i get uh what certification should i do even after the course is completed or uh, you know my previous students or new coming students they ask me this question generally what certification is good for me as a devops because there is no single devops certification if there are they are mostly very you know theoretical i'm looking for devil uh okay rupal no we are not giving aws devops professional training this is a devops training okay i'll take that question at the end Okay, so these are some of my skills, guys. Uh, I am uh, passionate about DevOps, cloud computing, collaboration, and scripting. Okay, these are the skills that you should also have after completing the course. All right, now uh, there are reasons why people do DevOps. 
I have uh, my own reasons why I've been doing DevOps because I, frankly, I was very interested in doing automation. Uh, but whenever you learn any technology, any concepts, you should have clear idea why you are doing it, right? Not just because your friend told or because your colleague told or someone told you that's booming and you start doing it, right? So I give this three good reasons which I have been giving from quite long time and I have not changed on this slide anything uh, because they are really reasons why people should do DevOps. Primary reason to learn any concepts or technologies or tool is, you know, uh, we, we look, right, whether people are talking about it or not, right? Big, big people, Forbes, Business Insider, right? Uh, the word people generally use is booming, right? Booming technology. Yes or no? Well, you look very sad. Well, for online, I have some classroom people over here. I'm looking at them and they look quite very sad, unhappy. What is that? All good? All right. Yeah, so uh, you can smile, guys. Okay, it's good for health. It's good for me also. Otherwise, I get scared looking at your scary faces. Okay, <laughs> just joking. Okay, so uh, right, the word we use is booming technologies, right? Uh, what does that really mean is you know big big people are big big companies are talking about it so devops is one skill that you know big big companies big big providers you know news uh, are talking about it okay nowadays i even get it in the newspaper that that is not uh, uh, you know surprising actually i was expecting long time also yes at the end of the month we need that money to pay our bills right to fulfill our needs so we really want to learn a technology that is going to reward us, right? Give us good salary, my point. So yes, DevOps is one of the highly paid job. Uh, recently I was reading an article, I forgot. I should put a link to it. Uh, it says in development, uh, the highest paying job is DevOps. I don't get confused. DevOps is not in development, but it's as I said, initially from diff different people think it from different perspectives. Some people think it's a dev developer skills, right? So the uh, reporter have written it like that, okay, has written it like that, that uh, DevOps is one of the highly paid job in development. Okay, if you don't agree to that, just check it on Indeed, Glassdoor, Quora, put a question on Quora, pay scale, you can check the average yearly salary of DevOps and it is surprising. Now. These two reasons are because of this third reason. I've been saying this from the beginning also. Um, we'll see what is DevOps, but before I get into this, I want to talk about this third reason, which is, I believe is the most important reason. Uh, from a long time, IT industry is like this, you know, uh, we have development area zone and we have operations. Okay, developers uh, are the area where people develop and test the softwares. And operations are the people who deliver this software to the user. Okay. Think of this side as developers, this side as operations. Okay. So in, when I say developers, development, there could be developers, testers, build and release, different, different kinds of people, different, different job roles. Operations, systems, ad, system administrator, systems engineer, cloud engineer, virtualization, admin, PC ops. These people are involved, operations is involved in delivering the software to the users. Okay. Now from a long time, there is a gap in between these two uh, parties, should I say, to these two zones, right? A developer, development has become very fast nowadays. It is really surprising to me also. Uh, I remember my time when I joined IT industry, development was not this fast. But uh, nowadays, you know, they're developing apps, mobile apps, application, websites so quickly. Okay, so development has become very fast, but operation was still slow. It is not able to cope up and deliver that those softwares quickly and efficiently, right? So if you can now think about from this point of view, right? Uh, there is um, there is a manufacturing plant that manufactures something, maybe food product. Okay, and they are the best in that food product. Think of your favorite packaged food. Okay, they are the best. They have, they have the plan, they are manufacturing it, they are the best in that. But also needs to be delivered to the users, to the consumers, right? Then only the business, their money, right, will flow. Money will be coming if they sell this, if they deliver it, if the delivery is slow, right? Or not up to the mark, they'll not make the business, right? Don't shake your head, say yes or no. You agree, right? 
okay same are same is with the software right uh, developer development area create the software quickly efficiently they are good best in that but if operation is not able to deliver it then business will go down right will be slow if you can you know um, extend the delivery make it more faster more efficient then more business more money okay now point is devops is the party that can bridge this gap and make the delivery fast efficient okay devops can do that so think of devops as logistics you know logistics right transportation who arrange the transportation to deliver to the users so think devops is a logistics of softwares okay they are devops are the best in delivering the softwares okay there is no doubt in that that's what devops really mean delivering your software quickly and efficiently at an enormous phase so this is the reason why everyone needs devops every organization would like to deliver their software quickly and efficiently yes or no because everyone wants to make money yes that means everyone needs devops that means there are so many openings for devops yes that means they are ready to pay money if they are not able to find people right supply and demand low supply high demand the price goes up team is with devops okay so that was my point actually so these are the reasons why you should really do devops it's not dying any time soon okay it's going to go long way everyone needs devops and it's just started so uh, why me uh, i have been uh, training people from quite some long time and i have uh, what you say evolved in training and the course has also evolved a lot i have trained thousands of people uh, my main focus is on real time implementation okay to through that point you can check my course on udemy there are 20 devops projects uh, which we hosted uh, last two, min- two months back okay and we are getting quite good ratings on that uh, people are liking it so check that uh, where i have shown uh, the real time projects right those some of those projects will be also in this course okay so i focus on how it's going to be done in real time right the ideas that i have in real time i'm going to show it to you i will teach you how to excel in software delivery that's your main job software delivery keep that in mind never forget that okay so you'll never get confused with devops so i'll show you how big tech companies use as different different technologies and uh, concepts to deliver the software one biggest problem what i see in today's time with the devops engineer there are many and they many people use many technologies but the problem is they are not able to integrate technologies together okay ac running fine okay so i will show you how you can integrate multiple technologies together to set up the automation framework okay and uh, to be frank we have a lot of documents i have written a book called decoding devops uh, we have scripts so many things ready for you for practicing this is going to be very hands on course and you will be practicing every day on some or the other technologies or the concepts and i have put lot of efforts in creating all those exercises and everything okay um and of course as i said i'm very passionate about training i just don't do it for the part time okay I-, i love sharing what i know okay now let's understand uh, why devops if i have bragged about in, enough about myself right certification this that that many years of experience blah 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 right uh, if that is done if you're good with that then let's move and understand what really exactly is devops okay so as i said there are so many explanation guys different people think some people say it's about automation scripting some people say it's about culture some people say it's about tools right so there's already a lot of confusion in the market what really devops is so what i thought the best way to explain is making you understand the objective of devops rather than the definition objective like once you become a devops engineer what is you know what company will expect from you what will be your objective if you know that your goal right you don't need to buy hide any definitions okay so to understand your objective uh, i'm going to start with a simple devops introduction uh, explaining going through a story um, of a user of a person uh, a fictional character inspired from one real event in my life okay so uh, i have created an animated video also for this one i'll give you the link later so to understand devops we're going to have a story 
okay through the story we'll understand what are the problems and how devops will solve it right anything starts with a good idea right um, you have an idea to develop an app let's say right like, you, know, you know facebook was an idea right instagram was an idea google was an idea right now look at them right so everything starts with an idea right so let's say we have betty okay uh she is into arts she create art pieces paintings you know she has her own exhibition right and uh, she is very famous in the local market okay she has a beautiful shop exhibition like and uh, it's quite famous okay she is quite famous okay everyone goes to her to buy art pieces right for interior decoration and right? she is good at that but now betty has an idea that you know i'm so good at what i'm doing why don't i expand right sell my product to at a national level or maybe at international level right so she gets an idea of why not i have a mobile app from where i can sell it i will have an online exhibition and from online i can sell my products right but betty uh, no idea is really inspiring yes what, what do you think you have a small business that is very famous right and uh, and if you can uh, export your delivery your items to the rest of the country then you can make more money right inspiring idea great idea right so she also has this idea but betty is not sure about mobile app development or she has no idea about how this is going to work okay uh, when you want to develop any software you need developers testers and system admins operations so many people she has no clue about how to do it right so she approaches to an software consulting firm Now there one kind of organization in IT industry, software consulting firm. Uh, you present the idea to them, they'll develop software for you. Okay, and they can also give service, or maybe you can go for service to some other. All right. So she approaches to a software consulting firm. Let's take the name as Swish. She explains the idea that I have this business and this is my idea. I want to have such kind of mobile app. Now, before we get more into the story, let's understand few concepts. now the software development process will start and a software development process is a very well defined and well organized process it's not like i get an idea and developer starts developing and then you yeah this software is ready it doesn't happen like that okay there are protocols there are rules it's proper process everything is documented right so in this entire software development process the first step will be requirement gathering okay betty has idea so she will explain the requirements what the user requirements will be there what my requirements will be there okay and then um, organizations will have their own requirements what software they're going to use what programming language so first step is requirement gathering they're going to gather the requirements second step is planning okay they're going to plan how they're going to do it okay so business analyst first and then uh, planning uh, they're going to calculate uh, you know the cost risk and resources that they will need to create this mobile app right third phase is designing right so here the architects will be involved like you have house architect right who designs give you the documents right design documents right based on the idea you have the idea right this is how my house should look like and the architect will design it for you right like that software's idea you have planning you have done now the architects they're going to design all right after the designing is completed the fourth phase is actual development this is where actually the code will be written okay the development starts developers yes take a seat you are late for a lot of time okay fifth step is testing or should i say phase okay it's testing once the product is ready or part of the product is ready and right? developers have developed some code now it needs to be tested so software testers are going to test the product all right before it is delivered to the user any defects anything will be resolved and then it will be delivered to the users in sixth phase deployment operations team will be involved okay we discussed initially right development and operations now development is done now operations now system admins dc ops virtualization team cloud computing different different people right security they're going to deploy the product to the server and the users can use it from there and they'll be also doing regular maintenance right regular maintenance 
means you know uh, user will be uh, you know asking for new features new demands will be coming there will be bug fixes patching right so developer will develop new new patches right this needs to be delivered and then at the same time the system should be up and running all the time so this is the maintenance phase where you know it's 24 by 7 you'll have support team and all those things right so this is the whole process in the cyclic view post requirement gathering then planning designing development testing deploy and maintain okay now different people work in different different area right architects you have the designing phase developers you have development testing software testers deploy and maintenance operations team right right in the beginning you have business analyst and all of this There's so many people right working together the cyclic process i've grown it cyclic because it's a continuous process this is called as sdlc software development life cycle you must have already if you are in from you know computers background you must have already known this right sdlc software development life cycle now there are different models in sdlc okay different types of sdlcs are there okay think of uh, this sdlc as you know different types is different road ways to reach the same destination right uh, if you want to reach somewhere you're driving uh, you will decide how to reach there uh, which route to uh, choose based on various factors right like what are the risk cost time based on different different factors you will decide should i take this route or that route right similarly these models are like that based on the requirement from the user from the customer uh, different models will be chosen so waterfall model you have agile you have big bang you have spiral and there are few more right i'm going to compare the difference between waterfall and agile and that's for a specific reason because agile is the mother of devops okay so we need to compare these two differences so you can understand what is devops so waterfall model if they're following it works in phases okay the different phases in this first is requirement phase it may look similar to the normal sdlc and it is actually first is requirement phase when the requirement phase is completed then it goes to the next phase which is what is this pull in this area it drops to the next level okay so design right architects requirement and planning you can planning can be in the beginning also right once the design is completed then it goes to the next level which is this is where the development will start okay once that is completed it goes to the testing phase so that's why it's called as waterfall because once this is full then it goes to the next level right finally you have maintenance now i'm going to talk about some downsides of this waterfall model okay not upside upsides downsides all cons okay uh if you want a working piece of software it may take months to deliver this in waterfall model you can't go back water doesn't go back right because of the gravitation the same thing over here okay you can't go back here all right so if you want a working piece of software right and if you have any uh, so you have to wait wait for months right and uh, if you have any new ideas if the customer clients have any new ideas you can't inject that as i said can't go back okay it's going to go only forward right so uh, in today's time uh, people have lot of requirements new new ideas are coming up okay and uh, think of this entire process takes 6 months of time to develop now the idea that is new and latest today after 6 months it will be old right world is moving very fast right in the 6 months of time i may add i can add or remove some new ideas but in waterfall it's not possible because as i said we can't go back and we have to wait for a long time to give a working piece of software and few other cons and there are pros also i'm not talking about that now coming back to your story betty she is not aware about development process nothing okay she is saying that i am not sure uh, i may change my requirement okay i would like to observe your product development and give you feedback now this is not possible in waterfall right it's not possible so the whole process of requirements will be broken down into smaller pieces iteration right so how many we have here let's say we have like 11 so um, instead of developing on all the requirement at once and then moving to the next level for you know testing and all 
why not we break this into smaller list right work on first few list uh, first list for few features once that is completed show it to the customer and then move it to the next iteration once that is complete then move it to the next iteration in every iteration you can take feedback from the customer or the client and you can change the requirements iteration can be 2 to 4 weeks means 2 to 4 week they're going to develop these features show it to the customer take the feedback and move it to the next iteration okay this is called as agile all right now there are different frameworks in agile scrum kanban agile in waterfall everything works in phases in agile things works in iteration it's iterative okay so one iteration is completed demonstrate to the customer if everything is good move to the next iteration and so on and so forth okay now with this betty can see every 2 to 4 weeks her product can give feedback right and which can be integrated in the next iteration okay so as the product is getting developed you observe it's also getting tested you get the feedback right now let's say it takes five iteration now focus here now carefully now let's say you have you have five iteration to complete all the features but that doesn't mean you have to complete five iteration to deliver the entire product okay you can do three iterations if the product you find is good it can be delivered to the user for actual production use so you don't need to wait for months to deliver the product just give me a moment so i was having a sip of water all right now so that is the story okay of the process how agile how agile is better than waterfall do you agree with that agile is better right and that's what the it industry thought in 2009 and most of the people started shifting to agile okay now before i get more into agile and the problem with it let me talk about simply build and deploy process developers are going to create the software for that they write the code right now this code they are going to build then you get the software now build there will be a build process we'll get into detail into build process in the course so there is a process called as build so they're going to write the code they're going to build the software and they're going to test it in their local machine so they're going to test few build out of that water build they find is good they're going to promote it for the staging environment okay where the build or the software can be tested much more once the software is tested in the staging environment everything is good it goes to then production environment okay this is a release management in short in short i don't want to get into too much detail in now okay so in short so code build test and deploy right and out of many many builds few builds will be selected to get into production now when now focus now when the product is deployed to the systems okay it needs to be tested and you will see so many times software testers complaining that they are not able to access the environment or some tests are failing okay so who will do the deployment who is responsible for the deployment which team development or operations operations right yes or no operations is in charge in deploying delivering right if something fails in the delivery who will be contacted operations team right so any failed deployment operations team will be contacted and this happens so many times in a week in months so many times this happens and operations team is like i have developed with all the requirement and steps that you have given me okay uh, still not working not my problem i don't know what's going wrong and uh, development will say that hey you have deployed it so you should look into it right so a lot of time gets wasted over here somehow they solve the problem and sometimes it also fails in production the deployment failed in production that is a business loss right and again 
in production also developer will say i have developed the product tester will say i have tested it everything is good from our side it's not working in production that means it's operations you you must have heard such kind of things right not i'm not talking about it industry blame game right it's someone else's problem right and this traffic jam someone else's problem right or any kind of thing something happened wrong i did not do it someone else did it there's the same thing that happens in development and testing okay they'll be fighting with each other like this now why this de deployment is failing in the non prod or production environment what is the reason okay this is the turning point guys all right so focus now operation team is going to deploy the product assuming that if it work in testing environment it's going to work in production environment following similar step as it was followed in the testing environment okay now we have to understand these two environments are different testing environment or should i say development environment and production environment are different they are not in sync most of the time development environment will have different data and operations and envir production environment will have different data they'll have different network different kinds of security production environment will be much more secure there will be firewalls there will be well tested softwares installed in development environment something is not working they will install some other software deletery you know install some other software maybe this will be working so they change the versions of the software behind the scene which is not informed all this information is not given to the operations team and this is the turning point okay both environments are not synchronized okay there are no clear instructions of how to uh, deploy it for the production environment operations team will deploy thinking it's working in testing environment so it's going to work over here okay remember production server so many times we need some tweaking some changes for the application to work some firewall rule change some software version change some updates okay the biggest problem is this last point can you read this the biggest problem what i also feel is the transition communication okay what do you think have you worked previously in it industry you right you you see this communication problem maybe you didn't think it was a communication problem but now wait like right? after the uh, demo think again the problems that you faced you will find mostly it's a communication problem okay now remember when agile came in 2019 or so in it industry started adopting it right agile actually had made the development faster regularly there will be code changes there will be regular deployments and regular testing needs to be done okay so after agile came in the development has become faster now new tools and technologies are making development much more faster but operations team is not able to cope up with this this is too many deployments operations team is not able to handle it okay maybe you have a plant let's go back to our story right analogy i said you have a plant that is manufacturing some food product okay it's manufacturing at an enormous phase but the delivery is not able to handle it okay you don't have enough truck or ships or trains to transport and deliver it to the you know local market and think of similar problem too many features coming in too many deployment request coming in but operations team is not able to handle that many okay so operations team you have a regular uh, deployment request with no clear instructions yes no clear instructions lot of requirements they are already occupied and they are itil process driven you know what is itil process you understood agile right the word agile itself means fast you know that right quick fast itil you can think just the opposite of it it's like you know the uh, the government office where you go where you need to sign something get signed something right so they send you from this table to that table come tomorrow next week right so think itil like that okay i'm not blaming on itil itil process is there to make sure everything is rock solid and stable okay it focuses on stability and agile is just the opposite of it right quick and fast quick and fast compared with you know stability this is just two opposite thing right now when all this is thing is are happening 
when the deployments are failing who is suffering customer is suffering right all right and let's see the project manager the project head okay let's take someone's name what's your name gopal so let's say gopal is the project head okay and gopal promised that he's going to deliver these many features on those particular date but because of these failures and all not able to deliver so gopal has passed the deadline customer is unhappy right now before we had devops we had development versus operations which is still there in so many companies okay development is agile driven quick and fast operations is itil stability itil process as i said approvals documentation okay uh, down times is this it's very process driven you know uh, i remember oh, back then uh, when i was you know like you know a decade back uh, one single change in a production environment used to take 5 days one single change change management process their approvals needs to be taken from so many teams right similar as i said go like government office but it it's then a surety for the customer or the client that what are changes you are doing is going to be solid stable okay but that doesn't align well now operations team will say you know this is general saying in Dev devops before devops that a developer has just tossed their code over the wall this happened with me so many times it happens today also they just write it hey i'm done can you deploy it Dude, what are the changes what are the versions background network change anything database change anything okay he's laughing already okay that means he know it right so that's what happens you know just just throw the code you know at me and then operations team has to deal with it without any clear instruction this is what i was saying right and uh blame game again okay uh, developer will say the deployment is taking too long time operations team system admin they never work they'll be just in roaming in the cafeteria not doing anything right some other people are laughing uh and operations team will say uh, i am always get a half baked code you know i deploy it doesn't work then i have to go back post and pillar right so this is a blame game right remember again customer is suffering okay this time customer brought few other new users okay it's not just demo it's a demo for the actual users now right and if it's not working as expected then business loss definitely okay so let's say uh, let's take someone your name sir jyotish let's say jyotish is uh, md okay uh and uh, he knows that that you know um, if the customer is unhappy it's a serious business loss right i mean at project head developer tester they really don't care about how much money company is making right never very rarely okay they are just interested in doing what they are supposed to do based on their task their tickets right but this is money loss no pravin this is not a recorded video ha ha come on does it look like a recorded video is it that good <laughs> someone said put a question in the chat is it a live demo or recorded video maybe it's it's too formal okay we will get informal in some time pravin okay <laughs> okay so uh, uh there was a uh, there was a guy called as patrick de boys okay uh, no jyotish right so jyotish has attended an agile conference in 2009 okay think we are living in 2010 right now 10 years back no corona okay free life right so in 2010 uh, jyotish remembered that last year i had attended an agile conference where there was a guy called as patrick de boys he delivered this seminar talking about how development has become faster because of agile but operation is still what still slow because of this the problem started coming this is the guy who actually uh, you know used the word devops who started the movement of devops okay and jyotish remembered that that hey i can implement devops and i can solve this problem and i can make more money right so and this is an actual story okay patrick de boys delivered this seminar okay you can check on internet okay it's in 2009 all right so jyotish thinks of now i will you know rope in some devops consultant who can fix all this problem okay magically right then the devops consultant gets hired imran thil that's me okay 
and Jyotish trust me, you know, like you know, like crazy, you know, he's like he's gonna come, he's gonna just revolutionize everything. Okay, everything will be smooth. Then I'll make a lot of money there. Okay, and I also promise like that, but it's not. Imran doesn't have a magic wand. Any DevOps consultant, engineer, you bring. Okay, it's not something that he's gonna do. He or she is gonna do in a room sitting and fix everything. It's not gonna happen. Okay, DevOps starts with communication. First, the DevOps consultant ropes in every uh, no head of every team, development, testing, operations, everyone together. Okay, and explains like I do generally. Right, this is the first thing that I do. I bring in all the parties together and explains them. See, the biggest problem is the communication. First of all, you have to fix first the communication gap. Okay, all the teams need to be working collaboratively together, not in their own rooms, not in their own silos. You know what happens generally is you know a developer needs something, they'll create a ticket, assign it to the operations team. Operations team is gonna see the severity and based on that they're going to respond and then do it in a few days. This is what generally happens: ticketing system and all. Now we need to bring up everyone in the agile team. Collaboratively, they will be working together. Okay, integrating all the tools and technologies that they have. Okay, that's how the DevOps movement starts. Dev the DevOps consultant explains developers the concepts of operations, servers, systems, networks, storage, and how stability is such an important thing. You need a stable app on your mobile, right? If an app is crashing, will you use that? We'll go to somewhere else. So stability is extremely important. That's the primary, and that's what ITL process aims at. But also, the new feature needs to be delivered quickly. So operations team it goes to the operation teams and explains that you need to understand the agile concept. You need to be a little more faster, quick, and efficient. Much better in communication. Okay, receiving communication and communicating back. Okay, you need to be more agile. Right now, when you want, when the two parties are fighting, right? How do you make sure? Uh, in the truth, the peace happens. How do you do that? Have you ever done that? You have to bring both the parties together, right? So they have to. Both the parties needs to agree on something. Commonly, need to need to take a back foot somewhere or need to take a front foot somewhere, right? That same thing in DevOps. We're bringing two parties together. So need to explain the concept of agility and operations, ITL to everyone. And then the most important part, automation. How can you be agile? How can you do things quickly? You know, yesterday I was taking class for these freshers, and um, I was telling them, you know, you can create virtual machines. I gave them a task, a very very basic task. It is okay, creating virtual machines. Most of the people know. Fresher does not know much. So I gave them a task to create a virtual machines manually, uh, and I told them to note down the time. This is what I do generally, and it took them like half an hour to create one virtual machine. Okay, then I said that I can do that in two minutes or less than two minutes, right? By doing automation, not even writing scripts. Automation doesn't only mean by scripts. Okay, there are other ways of doing automation as well. So half an hour of task can be done in two minutes. So I saved time, right? Now I'm more agile, and the freshers are more agile. If they need to practice something, they can bring up VM quickly and start working on it, right? More agile. So automation makes Things more agile, more faster, more quicker. There are so many things that needs to be automated in a build and release process. You have code build process, code testing process, okay? Software testing, okay? You need nowadays automation software testers. There's a huge demand of automation other than manual testers. Okay? Uh, you infrastructure changes, right? Uh, Terraform, cloud formation. You must have heard Ansible, right? Uh, deployments, deploying the software to the servers, okay? Uh, Ansible, scripting, Puppet, Chef, right? These are the tools, uh, or everything for that matter. Everything, anything, and everything that is in build and release process should be automated. Build and deploy process. I talked in short, right? Developer are going to create some build, test it local environment, then send it to staging. There it will be tested, then goes to production. Okay, there'll be lot many steps in that, right? So anything or everything that happens in that entire process should be automated. Now, if you have a question that who is going to do that? Is DevOps is engineer is going to do all the automation? No. Okay, DevOps cannot automate everything because one person cannot know everything. Can know, it's not like that, but 
generally it's not like that right for example software testing devops is not going to do software testing but software testing needs to be automated who is going to do that software testers who can do automation automating software automation software testers right uh, database level changes some db admins or db developer are going to give scripts to that for that so devops job is not only to write the automation script but also to take other automation scripts and integrate it communication collaboration integration these are not just the word people just put them in the slide and they say communication collaboration integration done go next they actually mean something not something everything those three words that you seen first communication collaboration integration is all that you have in devops they are not just words integrating now you have to when you have to integrate this you should be able to talk to the tester right understand explain them communication collaboratively working together like that there will be uh, security heads security admins okay ethical hackers penetration testers you need to talk to these people and automate their processes also or they will automate or give it to you integration that's the final thing okay and i said final now everything is set in the company and development and operations decides to work together okay and then oh this slide oh this is also good by the way okay so everyone decides to work together like avengers you seen avengers right everyone when you have to defeat thanos you need avengers right one single enemy one superhero is fine right but you want to defeat a bigger enemy you need to unite together right so like that everyone unites together developers testers build and release security any team all the teams that is involved in build and release needs to work together okay and you don't need to worry about how they're going to work together uh, the agile coach right or the manager is going to set up proper channels meetings uh, tools like jira and all uh, and everybody will be regularly communicating every day almost there'll be 10 to 15 minutes of meetings almost every day and there'll be uh, weekly meetings so that's how you can communicate and collaborate with some tools okay so you don't need to worry about that as long as you are not manager <laughs> okay uh, all right so uh, to get working together integrating and aut automating everything and integration not just automation guys keep in mind it's not just about automation it's about integration okay so if you have automated it then only you can integrate it i'll come to that point devops life cycle this is what is the whole end game again coming back to avengers this is the end game now i i think you people don't watch movies okay even i don't have not i've not been watching movies from some time but you know yes avenger is one of my favorite okay so devops life cycle needs to be set up that's the your end game what is devops you have seen waterfall model sdlc right you have seen agile iterative and now we have devops life cycle this is what we work towards together this can be achieved only together all the teams working together okay so in devops life cycle post process when the developer writes the code they'll push it to some place some repository okay and then this code needs to be fetched and built automatically not no human will be doing it there'll be some automation code that will be doing it then code testing process code analysis process the different processes we'll learn this in course later then delivering this code to the servers systems users okay any database level changes security changes and this is an automated process okay this one is triggering the other the other is triggering the other the other is triggering you know see the dominoes effect right like that one triggers the other thing so delivery automatically happens then automatically any database security level changes that happens automatically okay software testing gets triggered and software testing gets executed and it returns the result if everything is good then deployment to production happens okay then the users live users will be redirected to the new production systems okay if everything is good user feedback is good and then everything is good keep monitoring things this is the devops life cycle guys take a moment and just look at it
Okay, I'll show you one more slide similar to this DevOps lifecycle. No, no, not this one. Okay, but but you must have seen this diagram, right? How many people have seen this diagram previously? Oh, I'm not asking online classroom here. Raise your hands. Uh, seen this, right? You ever understood this previously? Okay, it's time to understand this one. Okay, it's a very famous diagram. It's a continuous infinite loop, right? So our DevOps life cycle is also going to be continuous loop. Why? Because every time the user will demand some changes or there will be some vulnerabilities or some patching. So developers will be continuously making code changes. Keep in mind, developer will make continuous code changes, code commits, which needs to be tested and delivered to the user. Then again, new changes, then again, testing and delivering to the user. So continuous loop. So DevOps is a continuous life cycle. Okay, this, I got it from the internet, this diagram, and I've put some tools over there. I, I like this diagram a lot. Uh, and I've thrown some tools over there to make you understand from a tool's point of view, the DevOps life cycle, okay? So developer makes a code change and push. You see the first step there, push code. It goes to some repository like Git. If you know that this do these tools, fine. Otherwise, just ignore them. Okay, for now. Uh, the next step is fetch the changes, run some tests on the code. So automation tool like Jenkins. Now I'm just putting one tool. They, they, they can be other tools also. Okay, like Jenkins. There are so many other tools. Just putting the famous tools which you must have heard. So an automation tool like Jenkins can fetch the code, test the code, build it. And Jenkins will do it by collaborating with some other tools like Maven for Java build process, Docker for building Docker images and many, many tools. Uh, Jenkins will be also integrated with some uh, storage, software storage. Just call it as, you know, storing artifact. I think of artifact just as a software. Okay, for now, artifact means actually software. So Jenkins is going to fetch the code, build it, test it and just store the software, tested software. Okay, software is stored. Okay. Like, uh, you know, in a manufacturing plant, every, you know, the product is, you know, tested and packaged and stored. Now the trucks will come and deliver it, right? Like that. So the product is ready now. Build artifact, that process, store artifact. Okay. After this, any environment level changes. Environment means the systems, the servers, dev, QA, production, different, different environments are there, right? Think of them for now as some, some, some servers. Okay. Uh, any changes if you need over there. As per the communication, those things will be changed. Or if the if the environment does not exist, it will be created automatically. Now this is a whole automatic process. Okay. Then deploy your build. So you stored the software artifact. Now it's time to take that and deploy it to the server after all the changes. Okay. And then after deploying it in different different environments, there will be testing also. Different environments, dev, QA, staging, production, different different environments. It will be delivered and different kinds of tests will be conducted. Performance test, load test functional error, functional test, different tests will be conducted. If everything is good, it goes to production. Okay. This is a whole automated process. Now you must, if you have heard about continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, if you've heard, I can, I can explain it from this diagram very easily. From the time the developer push the code till the software is ready, store artifact point. Okay. That whole process is automated process. That process is called as continuous integration. Okay, till store artifact. Then you are delivering it to different environments, dev, QA, staging, not production, not yet production. That process is called as continuous delivery from push code to staging environment. You see down there, that's continuous delivery. Now continuous delivery is not production. Remember that continuous delivery means not production. Okay, continuous deployment means production. If automatically it's also deployed to production environment, that is continuous deployment. Okay. Now difference between delivery and deployment is just this much continuous delivery and continuous deployment different is this much continuous delivery. You will have approval to deploy in production. Okay. So you wait, everything is tested very good. Then someone will be approving it. Client, customer, head, project head, someone will approve that. Yes, it can go to production. Then some scripts you will run and it will deploy to production. There is a gap of that approval, but in continuous deployment, it's pre-approved. Developer makes a code change, 
goes to the production environment as i said in old times we had uh, if you want to make any production changes we need to you wait for 5 days in today's time there are hundreds of deployments happening per day per day companies like google amazon flickr these companies are doing hundreds of deployments per day compare that with one deployment in 5 days huge change right huge leap forward right that's what devops does devops does this okay previously we used to call this one click deployment i remember that word all the time because i was crazy about this thing one click deployment i always used to do uh, you know was to aim for one click deployment right but now that is called as devops life cycle okay so that's the objective guys this is your objective i say as i said i don't focus on definition objective this is your objective you have to learn these tools you should know how to integrate them you should work with different teams okay to set up this entire process now in a bigger organization you may be working in one place one part of it okay uh, but slowly when you progress in the same organization uh, you will be in a devops architect or I consultant then uh, you can do the whole you can design the whole thing. okay uh, in small companies or mid scales also you can be doing all of it if you're lucky imran okay yes no my students comes back and they says uh, here you know uh, actually we i'm just working on ansible i'm not able to do this or uh, containerization some people say i'm just working on kubernetes area or some say i'm just working in jenkins they get upset because they're forgetting these technologies okay yeah, i have a question right uh, but you know if you're lucky you will be working in all these technologies trust me it's interesting well this is the definition of devops that i got from the internet which i like the most you can read that or wait i'll read it for you so devops is uh, uh, as i said focus on objective okay not on definition but if you want definition this is one i like personally devops is a is a philosophy of unifying development and operations team at culture tools and practice level so devops is not just automation not just writing tools or running some scripts okay it's not just about culture only yes we have agile culture okay that gets promoted in devops but it's not just about culture or tools it's not just about tools it's about all of this okay but this i'm telling from an architect point of view you may not be designing the entire process in your organization you may not be even selecting the tools okay depends on which organization where at what level you're working okay i'm telling you the whole I'm giving you a whole picture you could be part you you you, should, you could be having one role in this film or maybe you'd be the main hero who knows all right so guys uh, that was about what is devops your objective clear about the objective i guess right what you have to do devops life cycle there are many tools over there okay now uh, let's talk about the skill set in today's time that you need uh, to do this devops life cycle okay our companies are looking for what kind of skill set in a devops engineer now by the way different organization will look at different kinds of skill set okay i'm giving more generalized idea over here not a specific tool names okay tools can vary okay and that's fine and that's for good actually systems knowledge like operating systems knowledge okay if you're if you're using linux you should have some linux administration knowledge if you're using windows some windows administration knowledge okay infrastructure knowledge in, in general understanding storage networks how do they connect with each other how two servers communicate right a general infrastructure knowledge you should have broad knowledge cloud computing skills now this has become a default thing nowadays in devops i remember uh, our time uh, like you know even like 3 uh, to 4 years back cloud computing was not a mandatory skill for devops but today it is and that's because uh, more than 90% of the it industry is using cloud computing okay so by default you will be working in a project that is using cloud computing and then you need to automate things over there so you should know cloud computing by default if you are a devops today you should know cloud computing it's like that okay but that's not mandatory guys uh you know that sdl knowledge software development life cycle what is waterfall agile scrum kanban uh different tools that they use uh, this you will get more uh, 
knowledge when you work with the developers okay and there's no hard and fast rule over here right but you should have such kind of knowledge build and release automation or continuous integration automation that we have seen you should understand that and you should be able to do it any operating system related task you should be able to automate okay orchestration or continuous delivery process i call it also orchestration means integrating multiple tools and automation framework together okay that's the most important part at the end network and security knowledge because uh, you're going to use cloud computing and uh, there you need to understand what is network how the how it works you're also going to literally set up the entire network automatically we have that in our course okay entire network with security high availability and all of that things okay so you should know that security knowledge also which i'm going to cover and uh, containerization this is really hot skill today In today's time non having knowledge in containers like docker kubernetes is really uh, important has become very important okay not mandatory some organization have just doing it r and d uh, not everyone has moved to it so these are some skill set guys that you should have being a devops engineer consultant or architect now we're going to talk about what we're going to cover in this course quickly okay and then i can take your questions all right so um, as i said we're going to do it like a pro or too bright right too white okay this just few slides okay just showing you what we're going to do uh, so uh, as i said i focus on real time implementation so for real time implementation you need some projects right which you're going to uh, uh, you know the code which you want to test deploy right automate so we have a project called we profile it's a java application and specifically we've taken java because in java there's many build process testing process okay so this is going to give you some real time challenges okay so this project will have uh, many services that you will be automatically setting up and deploying like nginx tomcat rabbitmq elastic search mysql memcache all right i'm going to explain this project to you in the course but i just wanted to show you that we are focusing on real time implementation so uh this course is going to go in kubernetes and all of that so so many advanced technologies also but it's going to start from very basics okay now i understood this hard way uh, in the initial time when i started giving devops training i directly start used to jump on the tools and technologies explain the process and start using the tools like jenkins git and ansible and stuff but uh, slowly i realized uh, i know all those tech basics of it but people in devops come from different different background developers testers middleware right the, the system admins different different people so uh, then i started the course from basics of linux so first step is going to be like an eligibility okay if you are already a system admin uh, or operation worked in operations you uh, will it will be very basics for you okay but if you are not then it is a highly important step for you the first step okay i call it this eligibility so in the first step we are going to go with basics of linux we'll see how to manage servers in linux we're going to learn vagrant which is an automation tool we're going to learn basics of networking before we get into cloud computing uh we're going to set up our v profile project on our vms locally okay so you, this will give an idea right uh, what do you say again like an eligibility okay then we are going to start with Oh, so the project deployment locally on the VM on your laptop or on your computer. All right, this is local. Okay, nothing production grade, nothing real time, just just local. Just you're getting just comfortable here. Okay, you're stretching your arms, right? Before you start doing something, you stretch your arm, right? So you're just stretching your arms here. Okay. So after that, we're going to start with cloud computing. All right, this is where we start using some real time work. so we'll understand what is cloud computing we're going to see aws we our course is focusing only on aws cloud okay because there are many services in aws cloud that is helpful for us for me to train you a lot of concepts okay so no azure no google cloud aws cloud okay which is the biggest provider also and also there's a lo lot many things i can train if i have aws so services like ec2 ebs elp s3 cloud watch rds auto scaling root 53 So when we learn, when you learn all these services in AWS Cloud, this is part one of AWS. We have more services later. 
once you learn these services you're going to deploy the vprofile project on aws cloud like you would be doing it in real time okay so from your local machine you're migrating it to aws cloud okay and while we're doing it we're going to integrate few more services like amazon mq memcache if you don't know these services just just ignore okay just understand that we are going real time all right this is for people who already know these words step 3 we are going to learn version control system git build tools and then we are going to learn continuous integration the flow that you have seen right fetch the code build the code store the artifact this is what we are going to learn over here okay continuous integration and also continuous delivery we are going to see all these things in jenkins and uh, our project we profile project we are going to continuously deliver the artifact okay cicd pipeline you're going to uh, get familiar with cicd pipeline you will be doing some cicd pipelines also all right uh, then step 4 we'll be getting into scripting now some people ask me uh, many people actually not some people uh, is it necessary for mm -hmm. a devops engineer to know scripting or programming or develop ah okay. yes and no this yes and no answer uh, to be frank with you the answer is should be yes why i'm saying yes or no answer is because see today's time we have a lot of automation tool and we really don't much write any script for automating like we can use ansible or terraform or cloud different tools in different areas we can use that to automate things so we really don't need to use python or bash most of the time majority of the time but to learn those tools ansible cloud formation terraform you need to have some hands on programming okay some hands on programming for that reason we are taking bash scripting python scripting so you can see basics of bash scripting and we're going to write some nice scripts to automate uh, admins day to day regular task okay so we'll get comfortable with scripting and linux system over here okay then we're going to step forward and we're going to learn python scripting okay which is in programming so we're going to learn learn basic concepts of python variables data types conditions loops functions modules right once we have some hands on python programming then we're going to use python for automating os task and i'll show you what else you can do with python we are not going to do it in the course there are many many things you can do it with python and it's really out of the scope of the course but i will give you enough understanding enough knowledge enough guidance that you will never be scared about scripting any okay or any other new tools also come into the market you will not be scared okay after this go oh, next then we will start ansible and this is an one of the most famous automation tool in devops jenkins and ansible these two are the most famous tools in devops we are going to start ansible after we have get some hands on scripting so it will be easier for you to learn ansible ansible there is no programming it's templating and mostly but there will be concepts of programming so to learn ansible in great detail or master ansible you should have some hands on programming that's why python first and then answer okay and of course we are going to deploy a vprofile project automatically through ansible so every technology if you see we are learning i'm going to send this slides and everything to you you don't need to take pictures okay uh, so every tool or technology anything that we are learning we are implementing in the project if you must have observed by now right basics of linux then project deployment aws cloud computing part 1 project deployment right every technology will ansible now project deploy we are also going to see how to use ansible for aws cloud automation okay it is very easy actually then we start in aws part 2 here we are going to fo focus more on aws automation frameworks and uh, networking in depth so vpc in depth we are going to see uh, log management and custom metrics command line how to manage aws through command line s3 cli we're going to see beanstack service we're going to deploy vprofile project on beanstack by using rds and some backend services we're going to see some developer services code commit code build code pipeline and we are going to have ci cd on aws cloud okay not on jenkins not using ansible just purely aws services okay and some route 53 routing policies and deployment strategies like blue green deployment ab testing and stuff okay step 7 final uh, we have docker and kubernetes 
So we're going to first understand the Docker technology. We are going to build our vProfile application to work and run on Docker, which is called as containerization. Okay, and then we're going to start Kubernetes. Kubernetes will be for production containers, and we're going to learn some services in Kubernetes. Actually, too many services, and then we're going to deploy vProfile project on Kubernetes cluster. Again, back to our project. So we learn a technology, implement it for the project, right? And we're also going to see CI CD for containers there. Okay, so in Docker and Kubernetes, we have containerization of the project. Then we're going to run it on Kubernetes and we're going to see some concept of CI CD. Okay, and then All right, uh, now this will be the end of the course, uh, like for regular training, but I'm going to then also give you some video based tutorial that I have created for CloudFormation, Terraform, and AWS securities. Okay, things changes. Not everything can be accommodated in this two or three months, right? It's almost impossible to learn all this technology at once, right? At least for the beginners who just started from Linux. So we are going to take a halt, right? I'm going to give you a farewell session, explain you what you have to do and give you some videos, uh, which will be hosted in our portal for Terraform, CloudFormation, uh, and few other projects. All right. And also, if you want to master more, uh, we have 20 DevOps projects that's available on Udemy and our own portal. Okay, I'll show that to you. All right. So this is how the course uh, flow will be, guys, step by step. Right, many tools and technologies we'll be learning. Oh man, it's 10 21. It's more than one hour. That's why I was thinking why people are leaving. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, I I'm done. Uh, and uh, now I can take uh, your questions. Okay, so just hold on a moment. Let me first check if you have any questions in the chat. Oh, we have too many. Okay, uh, oh, that's email. Guys, please don't put your mail and phone number in the public chat. Put it in the organizer chat, okay? Okay, uh, I have good idea of bash, blah, blah, blah. Certificate. I saw curriculum, the first one, same thing, and we'll few more. Now, if you know all those technologies, Rishi, uh, I, I don't recommend uh, you learn them once again, okay? Please let us know the platform for the online ticket. Oh, Irfan uh, is asking a question actually, where we'll be practicing all this? Interesting question. So Irfan, first we are going to learn it on our local machine and then we're going to use AWS cloud. So you don't need any platform anywhere. You're going to create your own platform, your own labs, and you're going to do it yourself. Okay, I'm going to show that to you. In one week, you will be good in setting up your own lab. So you had a question, does it require scripting knowledge? And yes, I think I have answered that. And I'm going to cover that. Um, how those projects are different, the one at Udemy. Udemy pro projects are much more advanced. Okay. They are for experienced people. Okay. Who already know DevOps, who already know, who has done this course already from me. Uh, they can directly jump in those DevOps projects. Or people who are already working in DevOps, their experience, right? Like uh, you asked me a question, someone Rishi asked me a question that I have knowledge in these tools and technologies that you're talking about. So Rishi can just jump in those projects and start uh, doing it. From that, the 20 DevOps project that is on available on Udemy. From that, we're going to do five projects in our course. Okay, so that's how it is different. Is it Python or Bash? Both Python and Bash. Okay, you don't need to have any prerequisite guys like you don't need to be having some knowledge on something to join this course as I said in the beginning when I was starting the course curriculum that uh, people from different different background come so first week is you know we're gonna just do the eligibility work okay so you really don't need to know anything uh, but uh, having some knowledge in IT industry uh, will be an added advantage or having some knowledge in bash or Python or whatever anything is an added advantage but not mandatory no evening batch i love my evenings do aws certification is needed 
uh, no aws certification is not mandatory in devops or for that matter not any certification is mandatory in devops okay skill set is mandatory but certification gives you added advantages in the interview like client will have requirement that they need certified people in the project in such cases you will be chosen okay uh, i really recommend you do aws certification at least associate um, and or uh, under a few other certification uh, we're going to talk about that in the course maybe you can do rhc also to become good in linux or ansible certification also but that is later not with the course with the course it will be too much for you to do after the course you can do those certification okay how many days this course is for and for online class will you be helping to us to do practicals okay uh, help as in uh, there is no direct help okay i'm going to show you you'll have all the steps documents scripts everything to practice you'll have the recorded video what how i did it so you're going to do the exactly same what i did what i do in the class okay plus you'll be having some assignments also right if you have any question any problem uh, we'll be a, we will be having a google classroom every batch you take the screenshot errors and everything and put it on the google classroom and i can answer it or i can take it in the class itself okay so those kind of help will be there i cannot come to each and every individual and see that right so you have to post it on google classroom uh, i'll see the errors and i will respond to it okay course duration will be uh, around 75 days two and a half months like that okay and um, the class is in class is going to be interactive okay uh, you you can ask question anytime right if it's something i'm explaining you're not understanding you can stop me right then and there and ask me okay but if you have some question that is unrelated to the subject that i am teaching currently then you can take the question at the end well, anyways you can interrupt me anytime you want okay but again you have to be reasonable right <laughs> okay uh, no uh, just joking okay uh, i like class being interactive you will see in few days itself uh, how much i encourage people to talk and i don't like people who don't talk or ask questions like you have some doubts right like ask that then and there after one week if you are asking that right then it's a problem for one week we did something new and you did not understand that and i feel very bad about it that one week you were just sitting in the class not understanding the concept right so if you are not understanding things stop me ask me uh, if i find that you are lacking in something and for that reason you are not understanding something i understand that very quickly okay someone is asking me a question uh, i can gauge that what, what is the problem why he or she is not able to understand this concept i'll tell you to practice this or that or read this book or read that watch that video okay to understand the concepts class is going to be live not recorded videos if you want recorded videos we have separate portal okay you have any questions guys yes right good question very good question so um, gopal right yes yeah, so gopal has a question that we are using bash and python scripting why not use any other language okay now uh, so the answer is this uh, yes you can have any language knowledge of any other programming language or i can teach you not i maybe you can learn any other programming language but implementation of that in automation is less bash scripting and python scripting is been used and it's very versatile python scripting by that matter is very versatile in automating many things i personally have been was using python for a long time and i automated you know weird weird things with python you know uh, it has lot of a uh, lot of libraries so you can automate system tasks you can automate cloud tasks you can automate virtualization task db task just name it so that's why python uh, is a preferred choice if you see in devops okay uh, jquery or any other programming language will not have that much support to do automation okay so that's why bash and python yeah yeah so there are different levels of testing that happens right uh, primary test is at the code level code testing code analysis okay now for for this for, uh, yeah wait wait so at this level at the continuous integration software testers will not be involved okay uh, most of the time 
majority of the time software testers will not be involved it's not necessary software testers mostly regular basis will be testing the new functionality that was added right and that functionality can be only known after the deployment continuous integration is on the code it's still not deployed to any server or anywhere so that testing is just development level testing but when it is deployed to some servers right then software testers can run their test scripts to test the software software tester tests the software not the code so we have to deploy it the software to somewhere so you can run the test okay software tester so uh, software testers will be mostly coming in the continuous delivery process not integration process mostly as i said but some places we did software testing at the continuous ci process also yes so that's what the difference is between continuous delivery and continuous deployment you're going to automate everything the automatic delivery will be for the product stop production delivery will be also automated but we are going to wait for the approval now see so many organizations are more majority of the organizations are not sure that uh, the changes should go to the production or not they need some human approval in that places it will be continuous delivery only but these companies like you know amazon google microsoft cisco these big big companies right they have uh, many customers they need many many changes so uh, delivering the changes to the production automatically becomes necessary there in that phase the only problem see the only problem in uh, deploying automatically to production is uh, whether it is tested properly or not if the product is well tested then you can confidently deploy to production okay so mostly bigger organizations will have continuous deployment but i have seen some smaller organization also doing it okay yeah go ahead yes okay dot net developer yes see uh, uh that actually first all right so gopal has a question that he is a dot net developer and uh, um which cloud computing should i choose azure or aws cloud now uh, the answer will be based on what you want to do in your career after this if you are totally want to become a devops engineer and not do development then it could be aws or azure anything but if you are going to be a dot net developer and learn devops skills then definitely azure cloud okay uh i remember the time dot net developers we used to bring it on aws and we used used to use beanstack service but now uh, azure has uh, its own uh, sorry microsoft has its own cloud azure cloud and they directly provide integration to you know your dot net and things right dot net development so yes in today's time if i say dot net developer you want to know some devops skills so i think you should go with azure you you should be expert is in one cloud computing technology maybe a aws or maybe azure and you should have knowledge on the other cloud technology not mandatory but it's good to have right but anyways when you get ha hired or working in a project they'll be using either one cloud computing provider they will not be using multiples even if they're doing using multiples it will be mostly for migration or testing they're doing okay okay uh is there any difference if i buy 20 projects for something no there is no difference rishi is bash shell scripting yes yes bash shell scripting also i don't have knowledge of development on all the so you see guys uh one question i'm seeing uh multiple times I'm from this background, that background. So first, you have to make a decision whether you want to shift to DevOps totally or you want to be whatever you are and learn some DevOps. If you want to shift totally to DevOps, this course is for you. If you want to learn some DevOps, just to you know showcase in your project or you know maybe some uh, growth in your career or something, then uh, this is too much. This course will be too much for you. Okay. It is for people who want to completely migrate or you know get into DevOps and work as a DevOps engineer, consultant, or architect, whatever, right? Uh, but uh, being a developer or being a tester or being a Manas Kumar, I'm answering your question actually, right? So being a tester or whatever position you are, right? You want to be in that position still and you want to learn some DevOps, 
then uh, this is too much for you this course okay this course is going to be very hardcore hands-on daily practice this is going to focus on complete implementation that uh, is how it's done in projects okay so there's going to be too much hands-on in this course hey hi imran this okay, is Praveen. Have, yeah, i'm sorry i can't uh, help you in that uh, and some organizations have uh, criteria right they don't expect people with gap some organizations have no criteria the question is that you know i have some one year of gap right uh, what i know from hr is six months of gap is no big deal one year of gap you should have some good reason why you have gaps right uh, so it's up to the organization i can't really help you with that will you help us writing resume uh, i'm not going to help you write the resume but i have a lot of sample resumes you can just take them and then just put your information okay <laughs> helping in writing resume is the same thing actually you're going to take some resume and you know put some uh, you know your information in your resume so i have like a lot of resumes that we uh, we have like placement batches and all uh, where you know we have requirement from clients uh, we train people and we place them with an interview of course so we have re resumes and stuff so i'm going to pass it to you on google classroom after the course you know dress project for java only because most of the tools are used for java project. if i want to implement microsoft project helpful no devops is not for a specific okay so the question is i don't know if you're able to read Are you able to read that so is the devops only for java and not other programming language no i have explained you the process not even a single place i focus that you should have java okay that's what we are using in our course because java really gives more challenges there's more testing and build process and detail so that's why we are choosing java okay doesn't matter what programming language after the course you may work in a project there they are using maybe uh, you know python ruby dot net any other programming language okay the process will be same fetch the code build the code test it store artifact deliver provision environment deliver to the different users instead of aws you could be having azure cloud instead of ansible you could be using puppet or chef okay you, you could be using any other tools and technology okay you're focusing more on the process right but of course you have to learn tools you you, you look very angry sir are you good no 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 behind you and he was like continuously staring at me i was like did i say anything wrong <laughs> <laughs> all right okay uh now i'm sometimes little jovial i'm gonna crack jokes and pull your legs so please don't mind okay yeah imran i have and a question that is done even after completing this course how much experience we can populate in our resume <laughs> I'm, I'm passing on that question duration of the class per day as i'm working in company so you will be having one hour every day okay uh but we're working on it okay we'll discuss with all of you uh and based on that generally one hour it's gonna be one hour okay could be less on more disc we're discussion with all of you taking some feedback from you okay so if you have question concerns timing and all do let us know in a feedback right tell it to my team okay or maybe malti or someone will contact you so you give the information to them what time is suitable for you and all uh, currently we have uh, 8 uh, 15 am okay 8 15 am ist indian standard time and it's going to be one hour okay so let us know oh rishi i think i already answered that question 20 projects in udemy and uh, visual path site they are same the same projects okay what would be the difference between build and release engineer versus DevOps? A huge difference. The question is, what is the difference between build and release engineers and DevOps engineer? Okay, a very good question, by the way, Praveen. Uh, build and release engineer is going to be working on that at the continuous integration level, and may not be everything. When we say build and release, it doesn't mean it's automated. When you say continuous integration, that means the build and release process is automated. Okay. Now, build and release engineers are transitioning into DevOps. Our system administrators are transitioning into DevOps. Builder release are more closer to the development side, and system admins are more closer to the operations side. Okay, so you will see so many build and release engineers as tagged as DevOps, but they are not doing any DevOps. They are just using Jenkins, running jobs, 
or maybe any other build tool they're just running jobs and their tag is devops engineer okay but they don't have the whole life cycle maybe the whole process itself is not automated the point is if you need build and release engineers that means there is no devops that's why you need build and release engineers okay because build and release engineers is going to focus more on manually approvals you know code is committed inform it to the test developer that the build is failed or passed this whole process should be automated so you don't need build and release engineer devops engineer will automate that process automatic notification will go developer makes any code change automatic the build process will run automatically the software will gets generated automatic the testing will happen right you don't need any human okay good question Praveen. anything more important or less can we leave? yes you, you can leave the class now i'm just taking the questions okay nothing important except question answers devops books for blogs which is written by you. yeah i have a book decoding devops you can just google uh, you you're going to anyways get a link uh, you're going to get a mail with the slides and the book link you can download that book decoding devops book and also uh, courses that i have created online on udemy and our own portal that also you'll get the link okay oh for online if you want to see me you know this you can watch this video you know what you will get the link okay uh, you can watch me on youtube yes those are uh, see here we are talking devops we are talking the objective as we thought uh, discussed right it's about delivering the software and its changes quickly and efficiently we talk about blue prism and stuff that is automating a uh, robotic work right rp you're talking about right robotic process automation like you know excel sheet popping data from here to here tuck 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 right so you're automating that process this 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 not code delivery or anything it's a, a manual human labor work which should be automated at the desktop level you can say like that huh repeated work okay uh, devops is uh, focusing on uh, delivering the changes logistics right it keep that analogy in your mind right uh, 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 manufacturing plant wants to deliver its product to the local market right now replace that with the softwares okay so devops is in charge of uh, the whole the, or the entire logistics process of software okay can we get any interview questions on individual tool that you previous students faced interviews like that well i'm going to talk about interview question throughout the course when i'm teaching any tool or technology i'm also going to tell you to take notes as far as the interview questions are there uh, we have some uh, many actually that we're going to send you but uh, that's a very wrong way to look at an interview or prepare for an interview okay uh, your interview is not uh, kbc okay question and you know four objective right so uh, the interviews uh, are you know more uh, engaging right what you did previously how much you know about a tool maybe you can answer few questions by looking interview question and answer right but uh, then the more in depth it goes right then you'll be screwed you can understand very easily in less than five minutes i understand in the interview that the person is genuine or fake not even five minutes okay i can easily understand right so anybody who is a devops engineer taking your interview you buy hearted question and answers right what we call it in hindi is rattu bobot right ratta right i can figure out very quickly right and anyways guys people are interested in uh, knowing your skill set they're not interested in knowing the answers to be frank the answers question and answer is to know whether you you know you have the skill set or not the organization is only concerned about your skill set nothing else to be frank doesn't matter how many question you answer or not answer okay i've seen people fa uh, passing interview where they answered just few questions okay but majority they left right because in, in uh, organization were interested in that skill they hired and i've seen people answering all the questions still not get hired because of not having that proper skill set what they're looking for okay so they're interested just in your skill set you just have to build your skill set that's all 
any other I'm question right hello all right guys so i'm going to take your leave now if you have any other question please shoot an email uh, or uh, if you want to talk you can uh, ask for a conference call okay so I'm that right. is all then thank you very much hey thank you very much for watching the video you are awesome join me for more awesomeness if you like the video press the like button subscribe for more latest update like this and hit the bell icon so you get constant updates